to welcome everyone to Hello Labs First X Space. My name is CH and I will be your host today. I want to start by saying hello. This word is about to echo through the crypto sphere since season one of the Killer Well show from Hello Labs is set to premiere on February 8th. This is truly an exciting space as honestly, I don't think I've ever seen so many crypto heavy hitters all congregating in one place. We got so many of the Killer Wells judges on our space today, along with Hello Labs founder Paul, CEO Sander, and show partner CoinMarketCap. So without further ado, let's get right into it. To start us off, my first question is for Paul, founder of Hello Labs. Paul, well, where did you have the idea for Killer Whales? Like, where did it uh, originate? <laughs> So yes, I've been a producer and director in the TV industry for like so like 15 years. And when I was looking around, I couldn't believe that there wasn't already a reality TV show about the crypto industry that kind of takes it together, all of the good and bad things we see every day online and brings them together into a TV show that is not only entertaining, but also educates the viewer along the way. That's awesome. Uh, can you maybe tell us a bit more about this concept? Yeah, so the concept itself is pretty straightforward. So we have crypto and NFT founders from all over the world uh, that come to LA to pitch their projects to the killer whale judges. They tell them about their business model, their team, their roadmap, and anything else that makes them special. Then it's the whale's opportunity to grill the projects in an AMA about all the, and have all the hard-hitting questions that I think the people at home and the whales want to know the answer to. So one thing I think that sets this show apart from the rest of the space is there's nowhere to hide. When they're on set and the whales are grilling them about their projects, that you can't kind of disconnect or mute them. Like they're there in person, you can't escape. And I think it really kind of makes for great television because you're seeing some really intense back and forth. So once we get through the AMA, it's then decision time. And the whales go one by one to vote sink or swim. Um, and then if pro every project is lucky enough to score a perfect five out of five, they get not only mentorship from the whales, but they also get a promotional package from our show co-producer Coin Market Cap, which kind of catapults them into even more kind of uh, a higher tier of project. Um, I, I also think it's really important. I've seen a lot of people online talking about the whales and do they invest and kind of what's the makeup of the show. And I think it's super important to note that this is not about kind of investing from the whales. This is about exposure and shining the light on the projects that potentially have been overlooked by the industry. See, almost more as a shop window for not only the whales on the show, but mostly the people at home who are, as you all know, we're all in the same boat. We all live through this industry and kind of we, we a show like Killer Whales is so important for you to be able to watch and understand the kind of questions that you should be asking rather than just kind of jump in at the deep end. That's very, very cool. You brought up a very, very good point in that they can't invest their money. So, uh, you know, really can't have any bias there. Uh, I wanted to jump into talking about the whales. Of course, we have many, many killer whales on this call right now. Uh, I see that you have quite an interesting mix of personalities. Interesting is the best word, I think, to describe. I think just having worked in TV for so long, what makes a great TV show is the cast. So we really wanted to kind of combine a mix of personalities um, and we try to get a really balanced panel. So there's industry experts like Yev, the co-founder of Hacking. There's Gracie Chen, who's the managing director of BitGet. And then we mix in some of the biggest influencers in the space, like Alcoin Daily and Wendy O, who both obviously have massive followings. And then we have the kind of more business, kind of um, people from more the business world, like the Marios of this world and the Rans and the Scaramucci's. And I think when you're watching the show, you yeah, I'm not saying you're going to agree with everything they say. I almost... We almost don't want you to agree with everything they say. We want you to be screaming at your television set going, well, I disagree with what Mario says, but, you know, Mooch has got a great point here because that kind of conversation makes great television. And I think that's kind of what sets Killer Whales apart um, from any other show, really. Yes, that, that's amazing to hear. And for those uh, who are on the space, you can see up top there, we did pin a behind the scenes look at Killer Well. So definitely go and take a look there if you haven't already. Very, very exciting stuff. Uh, next, I want to call on Sander, the CEO of Hello Labs. Sander, I believe you are joining from the Hello Labs uh, handle. Am I correct? I wanted to, I, I think we, we lost Sander earlier there. Uh, Sander, could you say hi, please? Oh, no. Okay. 
Uh, we will come back. He's always working. He's always, always working. working. <laughs> indeed, indeed. All right, we'll, we'll get back to Sander uh, momentarily. Uh, I do want to call on Altcoin Daily next. Uh, of course, uh, a massive crypto social media empire boasting over 3 million followers uh, run by amazing twin brothers, Austin and Aaron Arnold, who are also co-producers of the show. Gentlemen, what made you want to be producers on Killer Well? Austin, let's have you go first. Yep. Thanks for having me. CH, we got to hang with you in Singapore, and you are just as professional on camera as off camera. So it's a, it's a joy to be here. Um, like you said, Altcoin Daily, and I'm Austin of Altcoin Daily, one half. Um, we speak to sort of the average retail audience every single day. So millions of people on X, on YouTube, follow us, look for an easy way to break down crypto. And even though there are many uh, differences, just like early days of Shark Tank, where you didn't have to be an expert in venture investing back in 2009 or even entrepreneurship, but the average person tuned in and got entertained, but also learned along the way. When Paul approached us, that was sort of what drew me in to that. Um, so, you know, to bring in the masses, to educate, to, to break down that barrier between crypto and the mainstream. And uh, I'll jump in. I'll yes. jump in real quick. Um, yeah, so we are uh, producers and judges on the show. Just signed on again for season two and three. Really excited about that. Um, but we've been uh, producing and filmmaking in Hollywood for quite some time. That was our first love. We haven't really had the massive success Paul has had as the executive producer of uh, uh, the VMAs. But we've done a lot of our own stuff and also got hired on a lot of, uh, you know, A-list stuff and B-list stuff and C-list stuff. But the point is, we were like trying to combine our two loves for quite some time. And actually, Paul approached us near the very beginning, and uh, we were um, producing this other cryptos scripted show. And he, you know, we did an interview on that, and he uh, approached us saying, "Hey, I saw you're uh, doing producers on that. Would you want to uh, partner up uh, with with us for this?" And let me just tell you, you know, when he originally like uh, approached us, and we said yes at that time, it was. You can only imagine because now the there's such a large proof of concept. The the video from the show looks so slick, and you haven't even seen the first episode. But there was a big hurdle to get past in the very beginning, where we needed to have any interest from judges wanting to be a part of it or contestants trying to be a part of it. And that's something that we did uh, help facilitate near the beginning, uh, making connections, and uh, you know, basically starting the conversation and just cut to today. Like for for us personally, you know, the best way to get on season two or three is definitely not to to DM up DM us, but like we have so many people DMing us, and it's just such a stark difference from the beginning when we were like, hey, we got this show, we're doing any interest in talking about being a part of it, and uh, you know, big props to Paul Castlin and Hello Labs because you know they are the uh, the true differentiator why uh, why you know the show's got so much buzz right now. Yes, a lot of buzz indeed. I see it everywhere on X. So definitely, you guys are doing something right. Um, I wanted to to ask, um, you know, get into kind of the production side of things. Um, you know, what was the most impressive thing about the production, uh, Austin? Curious to hear your thoughts. Uh, it, it was quick. Things move quick in Hollywood, especially reality TV. And Aaron and I had a little bit of background on that, but just for example. CH, let me, let me tell you a story. So this is day one of filming. And yes, the judges had been there the day before to do a lot of promo shoots and stuff. But literally, we were seeing contestants for the very first time. Uh, I think it was a Tuesday, maybe um, in, in about an hour. And it was me and Mario and Yev of Hacken and Mooch and one other person. And literally, we decided to do a dry run of, OK, this is how it's going to go when you guys vote sink or swim. And we were like, okay, let's practice that. We have Paul uh, talking to us from behind the scenes. And we go down the line, and one of the judges just simply says, sink, swim, sink, swim. And it gets to me, and I say, and I know we're trying to like do this like the real thing. So I say, hey, I like, and this is fake. We haven't really seen anybody, but hey, I liked this about your project. It did this for me, but honestly, you're not here there for this, this, and this. So for me, it's a sink. And then Paul from behind cameras says yes that's what we need you guys to do um give a little background on this on, on your thought process and then the other judges were like oh i didn't know you wanted us to do that or oh, i didn't know we could do that at this time 
And then literally we bring in the first contestants. So it's like things moved so quick in season two. I think we'll be even slicker and better, but you know, we got a lot done in a little amount of time. That's amazing to hear. Things definitely move very quickly in crypto as well. Uh, Aaron, what are your thoughts here? Um, repeat the question for me. Uh, it was about, uh, you know, your, your kind of impressions or the most impressive thing about the, the production. The most, there's so many impressive things about the production. Um, where we started to where we are now, like I talked about, that's impressive. The level of two different uh, aspects now that I see the finished product. Uh, you guys are going to love this show. I've seen four out of the five episodes. But the the level of production, like the slick uh, editing, uh, as well as the level of production when it comes to just storytelling in general, you know, something that was always important uh, to the production was this is entertainment first, and the show is going to be no good if, you know, the only person who's interested in watching is Vitalik Buterin or something. And uh, to, to, see, to see how it turned out, um, you know, that's really impressive. And, you know, I would just finish and say... What I like about this show is that if you love Ran or you love to hate Ran, you're going to love this show. If you like heated debates, you're going to like the show. If you like petty arguments, you're going to love the show. And if you like why, the why, industry... Why, why did you choose me? Why did you choose me? Hey, yo, easy to hate. Why, easy to why, hate. Why I love me, it. Why me? Perfect example. Perfect Ran, example. Ran and Mario... Uh, the guys like staying in the news. You know, the guys are killing it and they love staying in the news. No, Ryan is never on the news. The news, the, the news doesn't know who Ryan is. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I thought. So, so see, you, you now see what we need to deal with, right? <clears throat> so for me, this, this is mayhem. This is exactly why we, we got to all watch the show for exactly this type of drama. Amazing. Um, yeah, so speaking of production, Paul, I, you know, I saw that you worked on a lot of big TV shows, including the MTV VMA Awards and Grammys. So I was curious, how does Killer Wells compare to them? I think uh, what's different is with those shows is they, they were already functioning like huge machines. And I was kind of brought in as a producer to kind of help take them to the next level. But what was so great about Killer Whales is that basically it was me, Alcoin, the Alcoin Daily guys, the Hello Labs team and Coin Market Cap. And we got to make have a blank slate to kind of build the show that we wanted and then bring in all of the people that we thought would help kind of make it into something that's a real kind of mass appeal to an audience so it was like almost really for more fulfilling to be able to kind of create something ourselves and take it out there and also i think this is the show that when i wasn't in the industry this was the show that i wish already existed because what it allows you to do is to be able to sit back and voyeuristically watch these experts in the space be able to ask the hard questions and understand kind of how the industry works what to look for kind of talking about all the founders of docs all the projects have got great stories and they're human as well i think that's one thing we're missing in this space is that there's a real lack of kind of the human aspect the people behind these projects and i think what killer whales puts front and center is the entrepreneurs from all over the world that are trying to build something from scratch in a lot of situations and and so, yeah, that was what really excited me. And I think that's something that really shines through when people watch you. Yes, absolutely. And it's going to make for amazing TV, I bet. Can't wait to, to watch it. Uh, next, I do want to call on Sander. Uh, we have the CEO of Hello Labs. Um, Sander, so for a debut show, you've got some massive partnerships, including CoinMarketCap, BitsGet, and Allcoin Daily, amongst many others. How do these deals come about? Hey, CH, yeah, yeah, I'm here after some technical difficulties, but yeah, it's it, it's pretty insane, right? It's it for us, it's also one of these moments when me and Paul came up, you know, we, we came up with the idea and we said, you know, it's a very simple idea. Let's put a television show out where we explain to people at home what Web3 is all about. We make sure that we have good partners, we have legitimate projects. But then if you start looking at, you know, how do you actually produce it? There are a lot of different angles coming in. And basically, like any partnership, it starts with a simple conversation. I think our conversation started actually with me meeting up with the CoinMarketCap team back in March 2022, where when Paul and I already had the idea for the show, we started discussing it during an event in Dubai. And 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 what what, what you saw, there was like there was like a, a, a an idea that sprung to fruition. 
and we were able to you know get some involvement from coin market cat they understood it would be interesting and important to build a show like this um, we got into a conversation with uh, Outcoming Daily and, and they embraced it as well. And from, from there on, it really started building. It really started building to something that, okay, you know, we actually might be able to build a show like this and, and, and bring that added value. So um, all, all these conversations start just with having a good conversation, telling what you're all about, just being honest. And, you know, guess what? Two years later, we're here. We're about to launch the show. Uh, everybody has been, you know, putting up their best, their best act, uh, and we're very happy with where we are at this moment in time. What an amazing origin story. Thank you for sharing. So I wanted to ask, you know, what was the hardest part of bringing a production the size of Killer Whales to life? <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a great question. The thing is, as I already mentioned, it sounds like a simple idea, but it's everything and everyone at the same time. So you need to have everybody involved. You need to have everybody executing, putting up their best ideas and making sure that they fulfill their professional role. And it's, it's everything from Paul thinking about the concept to making sure that we have a, a great legal team behind it. We're working with the global team. Uh, all our killer whales are experts in their field, but you, you do need to go through all the due diligence. You need to talk to them. You, you also need to explain to them what we're not, trying to do, right? Not, it has never done before. Sorry, not all of the not not all, all the killer whales are experts. They were, but there were definitely yeah. one or two. There are definitely one or two whales. Careful, but, careful. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. They made me. They made me. They made me. Right, right, I'm co-host. Before you say any names, they made me co-host. Just a heads up. Go ahead, say names. <laughs> Mario, you're a little choppy. You sound like a you sound like a robot, Mario. You sound like a robot. Um, yeah, I'm, I just I, I, said, I, 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 yeah. Clearly, I just said I'm a co-host. So as you name people, be careful what names you mention. Go ahead. I I know you believe in censorship, Mario, but I do believe that there were one or two killer whales on on this killer whale panel that I, I don't know if I would have invited back for season two, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. Who are you thinking, Rand? What are you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is the discussion all the time, right? That, that's the hard thing about producing a show like this. Guys, what, what's Rand <laughs> thinking? I'm not clear. Well, no, I mean, it's it's I don't, don't want to mention names, but, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to mention Well, if you're going to, if you're going to open your mouth, then you might as well mention the name. By the way, no one said that anyone is going to come back, so everyone's, everyone's still in the chopping block, y'all. Right know, on, yeah. Right I, on. I, 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 listen, guys, I know my contract signed, so I don't know about anyone else. I know mine signed. Mario, Mario, did you... I think, I think, you're, the, uh, I think you're, you're the only one. I think, you know, a contract needs two parties to sign. Two parties need to sign a contract. I think you're the only one that signed that contract. doesn't count. Um, but, yeah, I'm glad you didn't mention Wendy, so I'm, I'm glad that you've put that beef behind you. Wendy was great, guys. Wendy was a real asset to the show. She's in some of my favorite scenes. Rand, you're the Quince cheesiest. You're the cheesy. You're the you're the cheesiest guy being friendly to everyone, and I hate that about you, Aaron. You know that. You're always oh, yeah. nice well, and the, not showing your true colors. Thing. You ca- the, the thing is, is you catch a lot more bees with honey when you're nice and when you don't have a massive ego <laughs> like, and when you're not Mario, half of half of crypto <laughs> Twitter, like you know, you're a very divisive guy. So if you don't understand, you know, just being polite to people, I totally get that. I mean, but crypto is known for most of the, crypto is known for a lot of the people in the industry. They don't have social skills and that's okay. And that's where I come into play. And that's why I'm so, so happy to be um, a judge on Killer Whales and to reappear next season. Maybe season three, we'll see. What do you mean? You mean you also got a contract? Aaron, uh, yeah, nice. I like how she sneaked it in, Wendy. Aaron, uh, you said half of crypto Twitter, you know, find me divisive. Let's ask that same half. How many people know Aaron? Not Alcoin Daily, Aaron. They know me, man. I mean, it's like, it's pretty, I, I didn't say they don't. We, I didn't say we, they don't. We, we, post, we post our picture constantly. We retweet our own account constantly on our own YouTube videos. If you watch uh, uh, where our main audience is at Mario, uh, uh, people know us very well. We get hundreds and hundreds, like oh, close to a thousand people during bull markets coming out for meetups, Mario. We're, we have a lot of pull. Uh, I, I have, well, I have a crowd. Like, a... when, Aaron, when we go out to LA, when we go hang out and do dinners and stuff, there's so many people that come up and they just want your guys' autograph and they just stop. I, they stop. I, the I have to, like, oh my God, that's the altcoin daily brothers. It's Aaron and Austin. Oh my God. Let me give let me give Aaron credit just for, for as a heads up. He's the nicest guy, but you know, if I jab at him, which I did a lot, 
when he decides to hit back, he's by far the smartest and the strongest. Like he, he's the only one that actually hurts me. So I kind of, and I'm not kidding, Aaron. Like in the show, I kind of eased up on you. <laughs> this kind of switched to Ran because you started hurting me a bit, man. Like you, you got, you got personal. Appreciate you, buddy. Mm. Amazing. I, I, I love, love the way, I, I love the way you went straight back to me. I love the way you always <laughs> come back to me. <laughs> An easy target, man. Uh, uh, all good i i i'm here for it honestly i got the popcorn now i'm listening in and, and i just can't wait to see this on the show as well i, I absolutely love this dynamic uh next i do want to call on jonathan who is the cmo of coin market cap which of course is the biggest crypto aggregator on the planet and co-producers of the show jonathan what was it like working with hello labs to bring the show to life Hi guys, yeah, um, yeah, it was great. Um, even when I had to go and shoot a trailer in Montreal a few weeks ago, and it was like minus twenty degrees, but uh, no, it's been great. It's been a uh, a really fun and rewarding collaboration where I think you know both parties have brought their strengths to the table. Um, as you say, at Coin Market Cap, we've kind of got all the crypto info in the world. You know, the data, the insights, and, and millions of users in all four corners of the world. So. So if something's going on in crypto, we know about it. And it was, you know, it was a case of like handing that over to Hello Labs, who are who are like proven experts at creating really brilliant, entertaining content, um, as we can tell from this uh, Twitter spaces. So, you know, I, I, li I like to think at CoinMarketCap, we brought a lot of substance to the table and Hello Labs brought a ton of sizzle. And here we are. Okay. That's amazing to hear. So, Jonathan, what what do you hope to that people can take away from watching the show? Um, I think a few things. I mean, you know, firstly, the I guess behind the kind of the sea of data that you know you'll see if you kind of come to Coin Market Cap, it you know it's 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 worth remembering that crypto is always is full of like fascinating human stories. You know, um, I think people who don't understand it well might think crypto is just this kind of wild west of trading coins with crazy names but actually if you dig a little deeper the web3 world is kind of full of smart ambitious people who put their heart and soul into creating you know products experiences services that actually aspire to make the world a better place or you know introduce some fun or you know change things up so um yeah so i think that's that, that that's a hope Jonathan, we lost you there. Oh, welcome uh, to spaces. Hey, welcome I, to spaces, guys. Yeah, <laughs> this is, I, this is not. This it. is not. We're not. We don't have the same pleasure of what YouTube has and Altcoin Daily have on their show. We, we have to deal with glitches. We're from the street. Oh, yes, well, I, 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 I do want to step in a little bit because I, it, you, people, you know, he'll decide he's going to build the next Disney in Web three, and you know. <laughs> Few years later, we'll be really proud to list the project on uh, Coin Market Cap, uh, and then I think just you know generally, I mean uh, you, you've all touched on this, but I think more generally, it's just about introducing crypto and Web three to mainstream audiences in a way that's really kind of fun, easy, and accessible. Um, I think uh, what I love about the show is that I think it gives it gives people something fun to talk about in crypto beyond you know, the data and the charts and how much money have you made. It's like, it's, yeah, it's proper, it's people, it's human stories, it's tears and laughter. And, uh, um, yeah, we, 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 you know, we want Killer Whales to be that. We want it to be known all over the world as the most entertaining, most talked about TV show for everything Web3. So, yeah, we're super excited about it. Yes, very excited indeed. Thank you for sharing. Sander, I, I saw you wanted to hop in. Please go ahead. Yeah, well, I, I definitely still, you know, work with this. Can't hear anyone now. <laughs> no, you got to, yeah, so now it's a, it's a glitch, it's a glitch, Jonathan. I have to bring you down and back up. I see you again. It's, it's, spaces is from the streets, guys. It's not perfect. Uh, go ahead, Sander. Right, can anyone hear Sander? Is he glitching as well now? I can hear you. Yeah. Ah, cool. All right, no one. Ah, Sander's glitching too. <laughs> it's not a good look oh, for goodness. me X right now. Yeah, well, uh, hey. sorry guys. You know, you, you, you're not happy with this. You can go to YouTube, everyone. You, you can you can enjoy censorship free X with the glitches. But no. I was merrily merrily bantering on. 
Yeah, we didn't hear the banter, unfortunately. But now Sandra, Sandra was speaking. He can't speak either. But uh, CH, up, up to you. You could, you could try wait for Sandra. I could try to bring him down and back up, or you could uh, continue the discussion. Yeah, no, no worries. Let's let's move on. We'll we'll have Sandra uh, test his mic and, and hopefully he can join us uh, very very soon. I, I do want to call on uh, Ninja. We got Ninja TV, who is a co executive producer of the show. You can think talent management. He's been working with the Killer Wells. Uh, Ninja, please tell us about your experience working with the Killer Wells and, and how happy are you with the end result? Hey, what's up? Um, so, first of all, thank you for hosting this space. Uh, it's going to be, it's been really fun. Um, you know, uh, I just, I want to just take a step back and say that I was just listening to everyone and, um, their responses as, as far as how the show went. Um, you know, the, the thing that I feel that makes Killer Whales uh, one of the most special shows, if not the most special show in the space, is that it was truly a collaboration. And so, you know, many of the people named off so many of the uh, incredible things that they did in um, contributing to the show. And it, it really came together as one whole t team. And um, I came on early in the beginning uh, with Paul uh, when we only had, like Aaron and Austin had said, only just had, uh, I think it was them and Wendy O. Um, and, and another unnamed um, person, uh, influencer who, um, yeah. But um, the, um, you know, and, and we really had to build this thing from the ground up. Um, I've been working in Hollywood for over 20 years. Uh, my specialty is unscripted television, reality television, television that's fun, television that's compelling, television that, that changes lives. That's that's a, the, pretty much the content that I always seek to produce and create. And uh, and Paul had that vision right from the start. And uh, the, in, in keeping in mind, this is something that I had always had in my heart for a while, too. Um, I've been in crypto since 2016. It's what I've done day in, day out, not just trading, not just being a part, but, but like actually, um, you know, communities and, and, and everything. And it, and it really grabbed me this last cycle, especially with um, the whole movement with NFTs and digital collectibles and stuff. And so um, we just really wanted to bring all this technology and the best people uh, to the forefront with this TV show. Um, that was our aim. Um, nothing like this is in the industry. Not in crypto, not in entertainment. And so it's it's not an easy sell. It honestly isn't. It's not the easiest thing to to um, to bootstrap a project like this. And and you know, Paul and Sander and the rest of our partners, like and um, and some other just to, to know that there's it's, it was really a, a nice melding of um, crypto people, uh, Web three people. Um, and um, and and Hollywood production. Um, there's there's other producers that are, are not on this call um, that uh, Paul brought in, I brought in that really helped contributed to this um, production as well, just to make it the best possible. Um, and as far as experience with the whales, yes, that was my job. I had to deal with each and every one of these MFers um, in this on, on this call and beyond, and it was so much fun. Um, it, I, I cannot tell you. Um, I, 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 I like, love, and can't stand each and every one of them for different reasons, but they all made the show so, so great. So, such a great experience. Like, I, I can truly say, um, and they all, like it was said earlier, they were all very different, you know, and I had to deal with each one of them personally, on the phone, emails, you name it, and uh, some of them I'm friends with, some of them I, can't, I still can't stand. They don't know that, but but I still, I still they, they had valuable contributions to this show and we couldn't have done it without of them like e each and every one of them and um i can just say that overall um and i and i, and I, I would just encourage people not just to watch the show but really pay attention to the bts watch the behind the scenes you'll see that there's like real chemistry there's a real we, this is what we call you know hollywood magic film magic like there's a there was a real magic behind the scenes it's not just what's on camera it's what happened off camera and just how the whole thing came together and, um, you know, I, I will say this one thing that I, I give to Paul, because I was working with him every single day, is that even though Paul is the founder and whatever, like, Paul and I were grinding every single day. And I'm not saying other people weren't, but, like, we were in the trenches 
every single day, along with other producers, like making this show happen, you know? And so I'm super duper proud of it. It's, um, it's one of my, one of, excuse me, one of our best works yet of all the stuff that I look at that I've done. And I'm excited for more. I, I think that, like Paul said earlier, I, I love uh, his vision as far as having understanding that th this is a wide open gap. You know, we got BT, uh, excuse me, um, ETS approved. Like there's a wide open gap for this type of entertainment to enter the space. And Hollywood is just getting warmed to it, uh, warmed up to the world is just getting warmed up to it. And so it's, it's, uh, it's really exciting to be on the forefront, uh, blazing trails uh, with all these amazing people. And I, I can just jump in for 10 seconds just to, you know, I want to give props to Vince because I just want to say, you know, this probably stems from Paul and the top of production because I've been on so many sets where apathy just spreads through or bad attitude. It's so easy. It's not, nobody tries to do it. There's a lot of just waiting around. And I just want to give credit to, to Vince particularly and the production because he was our go-between between between Paul and the Video Village. And, you know, Vince just kept his energy up the whole time. He helped... He helped keep everybody in the zone, informed, and everybody's energy up. And, like, to have him for all of the shooting days. And I know because I was getting calls from him sometimes in the middle of the night because him and Paul were staying up sometimes all night trying to, like, troubleshoot stuff. Like, Vince's energy made all the difference. So, you know, it was awesome working with you, man. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Um, Vince was, even though I'm Vince's favorite, we all know that, but Vince was absolutely amazing. He was super easy to deal with. He had great communication skills. And... One of the things I will say, if you don't have good communication skills, it is hard to pull off something as big as Killer Whale. So, flowers to Vince. Amazing. That is absolutely uh, awesome to hear. Thank you guys all so much for, for sharing that. Uh, next, I do want to call on my co-host, uh, Mario, who is, of course, the most well-connected man on X, and a serial entrepreneur who is one of the Killer Whale judges. Mario, so uh, judging from the trailer uh, released uh, so far, it seems like you really gave uh, some of the projects a grilling. I wanted to ask, you know, kind of what was your game plan going into the show? Man, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, I was a bit upset when when um, the host, not the host, the organizers, the producers told me I'm being... I was being an asshole because I was actually, I was pretty beat down when I came on this place. A lot of people know the story. Most people don't. But the, one of my most difficult days in, in business and life was the first day of filming. I remember four minutes before walking in, I had my team call me and give me news. It's, it's, it's the most stressful thing you can imagine. Four minutes before filming. When I put my phone away, and it was when, the, when I had the hate period. I had like one month of extreme hate after the Russian mutiny space. And uh, I remember Ran, you know, I was everywhere. All the news was talking about me. Even Ran came to me. He's like, Mario, I don't know how you're still judging based on all the shit that's happening around you. And uh, apparently the producers knew about it. Obviously, they knew about it, but they never mentioned it to me. They felt too bad. So I had no idea I was an asshole to the, to the projects. And if anything, I was trying to be intentionally, you know, I, I thought I was being too nice. And then when they told me, Mario, like, you're being an asshole. I'm like, oh, shit, sorry. And I would love it. I'm like, oh, cool. You guys are weird, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep being myself. And so that was no game plan. I almost missed the show. So uh, thankfully, I didn't. But also, I had the, the Russian mutiny was happening before that. Luckily, it ended after 24 hours. And before that, I was interviewing Imran Khan, literally minutes before the mutiny started. The interview with Imran Khan started. And then one of the most dangerous days in human, you know, of our lifetime was happening. And in my mind, I'm telling my team, I'm like, guys, I don't think I can fly to LA. There's a bloody Russia, a mutiny in Russia, and I have, we have to cover it. And on a personal level, I have to prepare if things get worse. Um, and we're worried about the nukes and all this. And then suddenly it gets solved and I rush to the airport. And then I end up filming this uh, incredible show that I'm grateful to be part of. Yes, indeed. I, I see there's a lot of drama uh, coming out with, with you being there, and I, I love to see it. Uh, thank you for sharing. Um, I do wanted to touch on some of the, the show's atmosphere, and I wanted to, to call on Aaron here. Uh, what was the atmosphere in the studio like for you guys when, when projects were pitching? Like, was it tense? Like, how, how are you guys feeling? Yeah, great question. What was it like actually being in front of contestants and, you know, their, sometimes their life savings is involved. Sometimes they're literally all in. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they have good ideas, bad ideas. I, you know, it wasn't, I didn't, I didn't feel like 
too nervous besides, you know, the normal kind of uh, getting pumped up for any kind of performance or any kind of speaking engagement. Well, you know, I, what I was focusing on, and I think what a lot of people are focusing on is actually, you know, finding their moment, um, getting their questions answered. You know, in regular Shark Tank, I've heard that the contestants, you know, almost have as much time as they want, maybe an hour plus to pitch to the judges. Here, we didn't quite have an hour plus, And, you know, everybody wanted their moments. Now, also half the time, Austin and I, um, every so often would get, uh, you know, a little note in our ears from Vince and Paul in Video Village, ask them about their father, um, ask them about this. And, but so basically, you know, I think I was focused on trying to make sure the relevant questions get asked and um, trying to find moments. And I think that's what everybody is focused on. Yes, indeed. Uh, Austin, what are your thoughts on this? At sometimes, because of what Aaron said, the time constraints, it was tense, but like especially tense for the contestants who only had 40 minutes and had to say the say, say something that resonated with us or, or get, leave empty handed. And CH, I will share with you this one story from on set, but I do just want to encourage the audience. We have over 2000 people watching. Guys, CH is doing a great job. Give CH a follow. Give Mario a follow. Gracie, Wendy, Altcoin Daily. Hey, give me a follow. I'll say it. Um, but, for example, I, so don't, don't, leave me out, Anthony. don't leave me out. Ran, everybody, everybody. It was Anthony. It was Anthony. It was Anthony. Oh, he said, don't leave me out. All right. Here, Mooch, you're our biggest star. He's never left out. Mooch. But Austin, tell your story. Mooch lasted longer in today's space than he did in the whole Trump administration. So I applaud you, Mooch, for that. No, that's true, actually. And, I, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm still here. You see that? No, no, and the, the the credibility that Mooch provided that was awesome. But um, the in the show in general, but um, just the story. This was very much, even though it looks Hollywood quality in a lot of ways. You know, we didn't have big funding from the studios. This was self funded by Hello and whoever they brought. But just to speak on that, that this was a lot of gung ho. You know, thinking of ideas on the fly. At one point, a show I was in the back producing. Aaron, my brother, was um, on in the judge's seat and because uh one or two of the judges had worked with a potential project before um we're all we the main thing was transparency and disclosure if you've had any prior relationship with a contestant then you uh step aside and you don't vote right that's fair so because of that because all five judges weren't voting <laughs> um it was going to be a tie and i was actually in the back and paul was talking to uh some of the crew and we we're already an hour behind and um, you were saying, okay, well, what shots can we cut? We got to make up an hour. How are we going to do this? But then Vince, executive producer, runs in the back and says to Paul, Aaron just had a great idea. Since there is going to be a tie, let's do a sudden death where this project has an opportunity, 60 more seconds, to try and change one of the judges. This has never been tried before on the show, but what are we going to do? End with a tie or a sudden death? And Paul said, yeah, let's do it. We're an hour behind. We're going to do it anyway. And I'm not going to share with you what happened. Um, but in the end, we all thought it was great TV. But because so much of this was you know, thought upon the spot and we were running as we were doing it, um, it could be tense at times. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, and with that note, I do want to uh, call on Anthony Scaramucci. Uh, you know, we do have a lot more amazing killer whale judges that we haven't even talked to. But uh, Anthony, of course, is a finance mogul with over 30 years of experience and recognized as one of the most influential people in finance by both Forbes and Worth. Anthony, as a Wall Street veteran, you must have seen dozens of great projects and productions. I was wondering, what did you take away from being in season one? Yeah. Well, listen, I, I loved every aspect of it. You know, I loved the fact that I was taking selfies of myself in the dressing room and sending them to Mario. And let's face it, I was just looking a lot better than Mario, and it was making me feel good. I know Wendy enjoyed that as well. And then when you guys walked me onto the set, I did feel like I was a Hollywood star for a few days. And you treated me way better than Donald Trump. So I got to just tell you guys, I had an unbelievably good experience. And I'm probably not allowed to talk about the projects, but there are two projects in particular, you know, one of which I made a reasonably sizable investment in. And I'll let you guys, when the show unfolds, figure out which one it is. And they're all, they're all doing quite well. Um, and I think that the thing that I want to, tell you is that uh, I'm looking forward to the next season. I don't know if you guys are inviting me back to be a 
a judge or not, but I want to be a judge again. And I had a, uh, I had an amazing time doing it. And uh, I also feel like I bonded with everybody in all seriousness. You know, I, I love Mario, and I'm a little jealous of Mario because he's in the hyperbaric chamber. He's taking like 100% oxygen in almost every day. And since I'm 107 and Mario is going to live to like 200, I'm probably like a little bit jealous of that, to be honest. But I do love all of you guys, and I had an amazing time. And, and Ron, Ron, if you didn't stop bickering with Wendy, I was going to step in as Wendy's Secret Service. I just want to make sure you know that. <laughs> I, I love That's it. Thank you. How stick together. Uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, and with that, Us I Americans that. stick together. <laughs> I love that. I love that, Wendy. I heard that. Love it. Yeah, and with that, well, I do want to call on uh, Wendy O, uh, of course, another killer well judge who is a media entrepreneur and host of The O Show, the largest and most watched female-run crypto YouTube program globally. Wendy, it seems like the judges, uh, some of them didn't see eye to eye on a lot of the projects. Uh, you know, I, I think on the space here, we could see that particularly you and Rand uh, got into it. So what was the mood like during the pitches? Um, it was a lot of fun, honestly. I like to hear people talk about what they're passionate about, what they're building on. I'm very much into um, people giving back, especially after they've made it. And I also want to hear their backstories. That was a really cool aspect of the show. Because when I get pitched projects, I hear about the tokenomics, I hear about this, the roadmaps. And honestly, it gets a little bit boring to me. I want to hear about why people are passionate about what they're building, what happened to you as a child, what, what really convinced you to create this, and what problems do you think you're going to solve. And that's what made Killer Will so special to me, is you actually got to hear the backstories about people um, and got to know them a little bit better in a more intimate fashion instead of just hearing, okay, well, I went to this school and I created this project because of this and I have a degree in here and this is my experience. That's all great and dandy and all, but I want to get to know you as a, a person because I really can't do business with somebody that I don't know personally and that I can't trust. So that was a really great aspect of the show. And the other judges brought, you know, they brought a different perspective, which was fine and I'm happy for them. But um, I really appreciated my take on the entire um, the panel. That's awesome. And speaking of a, a judge with uh, another take, I do want to call on uh, Rand Neuner, a founder of the biggest crypto live stream show called Crypto Banter and a serial VC. Rand, you were a judge on the South African version of Shark Tank. So I was curious, how does Killer Whales compare to Shark Tank in your view? I mean, Killer Wells was a lot more fun, I'll be honest, although I think the caliber of the judges on Killer Wells, or at least some of the judges, wasn't as high as, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, South Africa, the South African TV one was, you know, in hindsight, pretty boring compared to, uh, to crypto. We were looking at mainstream projects. Um, the, the, the show was very much a TV type show, um, which wasn't as much fun. I think here... Yeah, we had a much better dynamic with the judges. I think the caliber of project was, was amazing. And also, I think the production quality was, was extremely, extremely hard. And I thought when we were coming, you know, when, when, they, when we first got recruited for this uh, Killer Wells, I'd been asked to do so many different Shark Tank style projects. And I've, I must be honest, I turned them down because I just felt that the production quality was never going to be good. And then... Um, even with Killer Wells, like one of the concerns that I had is like the idea was to sh to shoot the, the show or to shoot the the, pro the the episodes and to air them a couple of months later. And I thought like, how the hell can that work? But I let it go and I let it flow. And I mean, the genius is behind this. Actually, like when when you, when you watch the, the the content, they actually landed up being able to make crypto content, crypto Shark Tank content, which was timeless. So I think that, that viewers that watch it when it launches will have as much fun as viewers that watch it six months from now and learn as much um, uh, as, as six months from now. And actually, to be honest, I think that the later you watch it, you'll be able to judge the judges because you know, like some of the judges would have said, this sounds like a great project. And if the project succeeds, then you'll be able to say, oh, well, you see, this is what the judge. So I think, I think there's a lot of like, longevity in the concept here. 
Yes, uh, very, very exciting. And for those listening, please be sure to go to tv.hello.one. You can pre-order uh, the episodes there. Uh, definitely a lot going on. Um, all right, and with that, I do want to call on uh, Gracie Chen, the Managing Director of BitsGet, by the way, also where I work. Uh, Gracie, BitsGet is a top five crypto exchange, and you are the expert representative uh, for us uh, becoming a killer whale judge. I wanted to ask you, what was the experience like to be on the show with this kind of reach? Hi, yeah. Uh, by the way, Santa should charge you for renting our best Twitter host, CH, to you. I'm glad that you have him hosting this event. Um, we'll talk about the rate later. <laughs> so glad to be here. Uh, I think my, my experience is a little bit different from some other judges because I do have very limited reality show experience. This is the very first reality show I've ever experienced. I've ever participated. I know many of you, like, Anthony has always appeared on CNBC, et cetera, Alcoin Daily, when you guys run YouTube daily shows, uh, and as, as, well, as well as Wendy uh, and some other folks. So I have very limited experience. This is my first reality show. I've never imagined I'm going to be a judge uh, on my very first reality show. So that was a very exciting experience. And we went to Hollywood. We were filming at this studio, which was uh, appearing in the movie of Batman. Right? We all remember that studio. It's very, it's a, it's a fancy place. Uh, so my per my TV personality on that show, after I watch it, um, like some of the previews, I think it's quite interesting because, you know, the, the TV style is very different from who you might be in the real life. Uh, I realize I, I appear much more serious um, and probably less friendly on TV or on, on Killer Wells. I hope that's not the image that people have of me. Uh, but I do want to be this, you know, sharp but nice judge. Uh, while some of the questions I keep asking in terms of uh, evaluating those projects are like, Oh, look at the data. Yeah, let's look at the data. And what's your real DAU? What's your register number? Uh, what, what are the go to market strategy? Things like that. I want to dig deeper and I want to have this laser eye while evaluating the project and make those pro and have those best projects, uh, being able to go in front of our best audience. Yes, and, and speaking of projects, uh, I wanted to ask you, you know, do you see any projects from the show with the potential to list on, you know, such a successful exchange like Bitsget? Uh, of course, you come from Biget. I'm glad <laughs> that you, you, you think uh, Biget is successful. I think, honestly, we are not the, you know, the top exchange yet uh, when people or projects think about listing. And uh, by the way, I I, uh, before before December 2023, I was only managing the marketing team. But since December last year, I started to look after the, the listing team as well. So we have uh, came up with uh, many more, you know, uh, essential frameworks in order to have the best projects being able to list it on Biget. So we try to balance between two critical uh, criteria. Number one, uh, they have pretty good community and a uh, very active community. Number two, uh, they, they also have a strong, you know, security uh, and strong tech, uh, tokenomics. So it's very much an important balance between the demands of our traders together with the, the security and uh, the, the fundamental uh, about this project. So, um, in terms of the project that I evaluated, honestly, there were only four projects, and uh, I won't be able to, you know, disclose which one uh, that we gave a swim. But there were only one swim and three sinks. Even with that swim, that one swim project that we had uh, in in my episode, that's a very you know, uh, a little bit like early stage in terms of being listed on a centralized exchange. So, um, sadly, not nothing for my, my episode. But the good news is, uh, Biget is going to be, it has been, and is going to continue being the search partner for Killer Wells. So we are actually sourcing deals for the second season now. And uh, I uh, and Sander just had a meeting a couple of hours earlier, and we were talking about have another reunion for our Killer Wells judges. So here I would love to extend invitation to every single speaker on this panel. Like we want to invite you to East Denver, where we will, we will have a site 
event that is going to fit um, Kilo Wells, and we are uh, sort of like sourcing the se the season two projects, and we want you to be part of the you know um, offline judges where you can meet those uh, projects face to face. So hopefully that's going to be a great reunion, and also we want to bring up more. Um, diversified in terms of what they are doing, in terms of where they come from, very diversified projects who are really building something Web3. That is super, super cool. Thank you for sharing some of those insights. I know many of us have not heard that. So Gracie, thank you so much. Uh, thank I you. I do have, yeah, absolutely. We do have a couple of more Killowell judges to speak with us, and I'm excited to bring on uh, Yevenia Brushevich, she is the co-founder of Hacken.io, of course, the blockchain security auditor for Killer Wells, as well as hundreds of others uh, well-known projects. Uh, Yiv, you are the security expert on the panel. I wanted to ask, what impressed you most about the projects on the show? Hey, sure. So as for like uh, what impressed me, I was really happy to see that the project's not only thinking about the business model, how they are going to attract community, was their go-to-market strategy, but also they were thinking about security in advance, like having this security-first mindset and uh, having teams with strong backgrounds on building stuff before, and even some had the same experience as I am, as like uh, having a degree in cybersecurity. And it was cool also to see the projects that are towards the same mission as we are, like building a safer web free space and uh, helping like uh, regular users not to, to be, you know, not to be scammed, not to be hacked. And uh, really looking forward to see, to see this project um, uh, being successful and helping the space. And as far as I know, uh, they are already doing quite great. Yeah, so looking forward to see all the episodes. Yes, indeed. And security is such an important part of crypto. So it's amazing to have your expertise uh, on the show, sharing with all the projects. Uh, really appreciate it. All right. Uh, we do. I do see uh, another one of our killer wells who joined, uh, Ella, the producer. I, I see him hopping on. Uh, do you want to say hi to our audience? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thank you for having me, jumping on in between meetings. Um, it was a great experience to join the killer whales um team and be a judge and to see all these amazing projects i i'm proudly the resident one of the resident dgens in the judging panel i think it was uh myself and k money to represent the the dgens of the space and uh, you know to me the show is going to be a smash because let's just face it if there was cameras on this space every single day it's a it's the the craziest reality show that just goes on 24 7 like literally when i when we go to sleep you know there's the saying oh wait till asia wakes up then there's more drama so it's just like non-stop 24 7 drama these guys were brilliant to capture this in 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 inside this show and to it's also great because you know a lot of projects it's good that they get put under this ex this microscope and this extra layer of scrutiny before they launch because we've all as the DJs we go through so many rugs. I know Allcoin, Daily, and everybody report on the rugs. The DJs we experience the rugs, so <laughs> it was a great balance, and uh, it was great to see people like Tommy on there, Wallet Guard, Cat Botica, a lot of great projects. The episodes that I, that I was able to to film were. We're, we're very like eventful, fun, intriguing. So I'm excited for everybody to see the show. I think it's going to be a hit. And for uh, those of you guys that don't know, if you guys aren't following Illa, he's one of the biggest. So he's one of the he's one of the big guys, um, community wise in the Board of Yacht Club. But he has also produced, worked with some of the biggest hip hop hip hop artists in the space, like Eminem, etc. So Illa. Maybe I'm strong too much, but is there any? Do you see any of that? That excitement, that hustle, that it, that you see in like early hip hop or even late stage or hits hip hop artists? Did you, did you see any of that in the in the crypto projects? No, absolutely. You know, I'm not. I've, I've yet to meet a star that didn't start off as just like a scrappy visionary. And you know this space the, the is the foundation of this space of at least NFTs is is art and creativity, and then you know people turn it into to something else. But that foundation is already laid, and to me that's the magic of of this entire space. And it was great to see p 
people coming in with you know just a dollar and a dream some people literally just putting everything their last dollar or maybe even hiding <laughs> hiding how much they put into it from their spouses and just coming in and and just putting it all on the line in front of these judges and you know of course Rand was give, was was being a, an asshole to people <laughs> but that's what he does and that's what makes it amazing and, and Wendy was being tough on people that's what makes it amazing and you know it was a great experience and there's definitely that that air of of early hip hop in the in the web3 space because it's a brand new space Yes, indeed. And for those who don't know, Illa is a 12-time Platinum Grammy-nominated music producer uh, and, of course, a community and partnership lead at Yuga Labs. So, you know, the killer whales here on the panel, it, it really is, there's something for everyone. I mean, you really have a massively diverse uh, background with a wealth of knowledge, not just in crypto, but uh, in, in different industries and, and really being successful in their craft. So uh, these guys definitely are the ones you want to be paying attention to and watching closely uh, and, and, and how kind of their mindset and how they think. So it's amazing to see the killer whales uh, com coming on and, and sharing all of these insights with us. Uh, so uh, with that being said, you know, that about concludes our exciting space today. I wanted to ask each of our uh, guest speakers, do you have any last remarks you'd like to share? Uh, for our audience before we end this space. Uh, maybe, Sandra, we, you can start us off. Well, you know, I can only say that we as Hello Labs and, and Killer Wills, we're super, super proud of the team that is here today. Everybody worked their asses off. Everybody contributed. I think that with the team that is here today and everybody that might not have had a chance to be on this space, we've built an awesome show. We have built something that I believe and we believe that the industry needs uh, we're showing. Oh, we lost Sander again. Yeah, I think he got a call. He needs to put his phone on. Do not disturb. Uh, okay, uh, Sander, can you hear us? Oh, uh, okay. No. We'll we'll go. Well, glitching. Go ahead. Glitching. Uh, all right. No worries. Uh, maybe uh, Mario, you can uh, share your last remarks with our audience. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, no, I think you'll enjoy it, guys. Uh, uh, I, I enjoyed the panel with Scaramucci and Ryan. And when do you on that panel too? And of course, the Altcoin guys, Altcoin boys, are Aaron or Austin. But um, it was, it was, Scaramucci was like the, the father. He doesn't speak much. You'll see Scaramucci will be quiet. But when he speaks, it's like the... Just, either it's something random you wouldn't expect. One of them went viral, something about diarrhea. He go through the canal as diary. I can't remember what example he gave Scaramucci. He's like, so you give those snippets. So you speak less than everyone else, uh, but you're always speaking with, always calm. You know, me and Ran are getting pissed off. Ran and Wendy are fighting. And then Scaramucci just talks. There's no worry in the world. Like, I've been there. I've done this 20, 30 times. And it's just another day. I'm going to give them advice and then go have my coffee. How's my family doing? And they've got Ran. <laughs> Ran was full of energy. I think everyone knows how Ran is. Um, Wendy, uh, Wendy, you started off a bit like I don't know. You, you started off a bit uncomfortable, um, uh, but then afterwards you kind of started dominating. And then Aaron and Austin, they deserve the most credit. Excuse me, comfortable? No, I was just what what happened. This is the thing with me is like I'll stay quiet for a little bit and I'll observe my surroundings and then I'll start digging into things a little bit more. So basically, what I was doing was just taking a step back and watching you all to see. Um, see what but buttons I could push and to kind of really get an idea as to what the type of personality is I'm going to be dealing with. Yeah, so you didn't expect me to be such a, such a nice guy. And then we ended Mar up becoming Mario, a really good Mario friend. can't get... Oh, let, me give you, hold on, hold on, let me give you credit. I'll give you credit. And I'll give you the mic, I promise. I was just, that was my, the, the highlight of what I was Mario can't give a compliment without doing a neg as well. So I was... I was <laughs> no, 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 what I want to say is you guys... There was no negative, I promise. You guys deserve the most credit. You in, in, in Austin... You had that little headpiece in your ear. Most people don't know that. And I, I wasn't going to mention it, but since you mentioned it, I'm allowed to. And then you were getting that advice live while everyone else was running the show. And do you remember how I can tell when you're getting that advice because your face does that thing? Then I know you're saying something because there's a reason you're saying it. I'm like, all right, cool. Or you're trying to jump in. You remember that? Um, I can't remember. Aaron, Austin. Yeah, I think it was you, Austin. Remember when... You needed to jump in, but like Ryan is too excited, he wouldn't jump in. Like I got you back, <laughs> and then I, I interrupt you. It's just it was fun. It was a, it was a, it was a nice behind the scenes stuff that I hope they publish.
And to be clear, it was they weren't giving us any inside any inside information. It was just like, hey, ask them about their father and stuff like that. No, it's more more Rand is annoying. Please get him to stop talking, type thing. That was yeah, exactly yeah, we must move on. To to rein me in because um, poor he was like poor Vince and Paul. Their faces the entire time. They didn't know what was going to come out of my mouth next. Yeah, Vince was impatient. Vince is not here. Um, uh, we we oh we, yeah. There's also Ninja. Ninja was there. He was producing. He was very, very impatient. I guess he gets. He's so nice, so nice. But I interrupt him, or you don't listen to him. He's, no, he, this he was not impatient. Off. He had to deal with you and Mar you and Rand. No, no, I'm not talking. Vince I'm not talking. Not, not talking about Vince. Talking about Ninja. Ninja. I'm not sure. I remember, but Ninja was was. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like he wants to. Me and Rand are just always messing around. I, 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 I know that for myself. And Rand turns out to be the same. We always love to joke around, like nonstop joking around. Scaramucci is not too different either. <laughs> for anyone that doesn't know, so we're all joking, and and Ninja would never say anything to Scaramucci. No one dares. Like he's a, he's even though he's the nicest, he's the scariest and the best looking. But then at me and Rand, he didn't give a shit. <laughs> so he would he would just he would uh, give us an ear every uh, you know, couple of hours it was, uh, it was fun good I didn't have to do it it made my job easier amen yep love love to hear it thanks guys um, alright so uh, I want to call on Aaron of course all coin daily uh, any last remarks for our audience yeah thank you CH thank you Killer Whales great space um, you know I want to just you know flow the respect towards Mario Scaramucci Wendy Rant all of the judges Illa everybody awesome working with you guys and uh Piggyback off what Mario said, certainly the people who deserve the most credit are Paul, Sander, and the Hello Labs team because you know I, we got to witness this from the very beginning when nobody much cared besides us to the very end uh, or right when the show premieres. So it's it's amazing to see. I would just uh, say to the folks at home, this is how you know I think. First of all, if you're in crypto even a little bit, which I assume is most people who are watching this space, this is a must watch. Uh, you know, this is entertaining for like even my parents or my friends who I showed uh, an episode to. Uh, they were into it, even though they're not that much into crypto. But if you're in crypto, certainly a must watch, even if just to be like, oh, I can't believe they didn't ask him about this. Or I, I can't believe he said this. It's going to be highly entertaining for everybody in crypto and everybody watching along right now. You know, if you want if you want the best chance for somebody like Scaramucci or Ran or Mario or Altcoin Daily to engage with you on Twitter, you know, watch each episode as they come out. You know, first episode, first week, second episode, second week, and, you know, tweet at us and, uh, you know, start the conversation based on each episode. That's when we're going to be most, uh, you know, enthusiastic about engaging back. So, uh, you know, I look forward to uh, seeing people uh, tweet out their favorite moments uh, week after week as each episode premieres. Thank you. Thanks so much, Aaron. Uh, Austin, any last remarks? CH, I'll keep this short. You've done a great job hosting. I just want to say it is very, very rare the amount of diversity and credibility that you know the team has gotten together in the form of these judges like Mooch, Yev of Hacken, Gracie of Major Exchange Bitget. All these people bring major credibility from very diverse mindsets. And, of course, even meeting some people for the first time, Mario, I think was a huge value add um, just in terms of business building, growth building, ran obviously the same thing. Wendy, us, it's just all very diverse and different. And often on these shows, you'll get something where it's just influencers or it's just people you've never heard of. Um, this has that diversity. So this is the type of show that when I was first getting into crypto, it would have been great to watch with my friends and then piggyback back off their discussions. Like, oh, this was this discussion for this project. What do you think? What do you think? So I'll be watching. Amazing. Thanks so much. Uh, Yiv, any last remarks you'd like to share? Yeah, sure. So this is a great mix of like technology, business, and fun, especially. So I ask everyone to look forward to this. And uh, yeah, that, that's going to be a very, very interesting show. Everyone in our network is like, really looking forward to this. And thank you a lot for Hello Labs and uh, all the crew involved. Thanks so much, Eve. Really appreciate it. Uh, Anthony, any last remarks? <laughs> Listen, I love, love working with every one of you guys. And um, I'm very grateful to be on the show. And I think the one thing I would just leave everybody with is that you guys as producers did an amazing job of picking great projects. So even though some of those projects we had to say sync to, 
Uh, there were some great entrepreneurs on that show, and the energy and the vibe of those business leaders was tremendous. And so, uh, again, I just want to thank you guys for including me. And Mario, I also just want to say thank you for acknowledging that I'm better looking than you, because I'm getting older, Mario, and, and you know, it, I'm getting a little more insecure at this age. So it was very nice of you at least to make that acknowledgement and speak the truth here on the spaces. I love it. Thank you so much. Uh, Wendy O, any last remarks? Yes. Um, thank you again for leading this space. And honestly, it was a pleasure just to really hang out with a bunch of my friends and hang out. And of course, I got to meet Anthony and I, Mario in person. Um, but again, like it was just a really great experience. Big thank you to, to Paul and to Vince and the entire team. And, you know, got nothing but love for my brothers, Altcoin Daily. But I really just want to comment and say that, um, my favorite part of the show was the steady cam guy. He was absolutely outstanding. The camera work done in this show is going to absolutely blow you guys away. Even if you just put the show on mute, you don't want to hear any of us speak because I know once Mario talks, you all are going to mute him anyways. Just kidding, Mario. I love you. Um, but just the camera work is absolutely outstanding. Like, I, I cannot wait for season two and season three. It's going to continue to get better and better and better. And if you like the bickering in the show, if you like the discourse, if you like the drama, the entertainment, we're really going to pick it up in the next two seasons. Again, thank you. And shout out to you, Ella. Amazing. Thank you so much, Wendy. And of course, Ella, any last remarks? This is must see TV. Do not miss this. Don't play yourself. This space is literally the best reality show that we get to experience on a daily basis, but we only do it on this app. So tune in so you can see your favorite hosts on the on the big screen and brand new projects that you get like you get real alpha and in, 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 on the big screen in real time. So don't miss out. Thank you so much, Ella. Uh, of course, uh, Paul, please share with us uh, your last thoughts. Oh, Paul, you're muted. Hey, yes. So it's going to be a big few weeks, obviously, for the show. And I just want to kind of like take a step back and say that the show is polarizing by design. So you might, when you're watching it, you might love the judges, you might hate them. You might love the projects, you might hate them. And you might hate the show, you might love it. But what I ask is that you go into it with an open mind and not let kind of everyone else kind of in the space who sometimes can kind of dictate the kind of narrative, set the narrative for yourself. Because I think if you go into the show with open eyes, you'll not only be entertained, but you'll also come away educated as well. And I just want to kind of reiterate as well that the premiere is on Hello TV tomorrow, at 8th, um, 8th of February, 3 p.m. GMT. And then starting next week, we start announcing our mainstream streaming platforms. And then we're building through to the mainstream streaming release on March 11th. So once we get this Web3 premiere out the way, that's when we start to kind of really ramp up to that mainstream stream and release. And we'll be announcing the names of the platforms that are going to be playing the, the show um, on their platforms. So yeah, so again, like Ella just kind of mentioned, this is kind of the start, the grassroots get in for the Web3 element of it, get the feet on the table. We want to build a following. We're not saying the show's perfect by any means. There's lots of learnings and lots of ways we're going to improve it going forward. And we encourage anyone who's listening to this, who's got feedback to us, get involved in the Hello community, come into our Telegram, tell us how we can improve, tell us your opinions, tell us if you want to get rid of Ran and bring someone else in. We're definitely open to having that conversation. And I think this is kind of a first step on the journey of building a show that is the, the, like the go-to for everyone new coming into the industry. And Paul, 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 correct me if I'm wrong on this. I hope I'm not wrong. Like just get, it's gonna hit like mainstream uh, streaming services, like you said, uh, soon, but first it's on Hello's site, it's token gated. But isn't it true that like, to get like first access to the show, to get past the token gate, it's not like, you're not like price gouging or anything. Like it's very like affordable just to see the first access. Absolutely, yeah. So um, use the Hello token to access the show. Uh, if you want to watch one episode, it's kind of $2.99 worth of Hello tokens. 
And then if you want to buy the full season, you can get the full season for the equivalent of eleven ninety nine of dollars worth of Hello. So we've kind of like tried to keep the price really low, really kind of get as many people through the door as possible and watching the show, build that grassroots kind of foundation fan base. And then when it gets to the mainstream, then it's going to be kind of a similar pricing model. And we're also working with platforms that will offer for free as well with advertising. Um, you have to watch some advertising to get through it. So it's going to be released in kind of I don't want to give the details away, but it's a it's a pretty it's a worldwide release, five different languages, across all the kind of major streaming platforms, or definitely most of them. So yeah, it's it's this is you guys are are in like ground zero of of what this show is kind of going to be eventually. Super, super exciting. Paul, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, and for, for you guys listening in, please be sure to go to the top there. There is a pinned post um, about the release, and you can find all the details there. Uh, be sure to, to click on it, check it out, repost it, share it. Uh, you know, a- anything that you can do to help spread the word of Killer Whales. And I super, super, I just can't wait to to watch it. And, and I'm sure all of our listeners here as well. Okay, that about concludes our space today, guys. Uh, please be sure to follow all of our amazing guest speakers. And of course, Hello Labs, if you haven't already, uh, there will be a lot more exciting updates coming f- your way. That is it from us today. We will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.